Hello good people and thank you for tuning in to another one of our tutorials. In this one, we're going to be exploring the Corona Lister functionality. Now, in case you don't already know what the Corona Lister is, it's a scene management tool with which you can easily access and tweak certain Corona specific functionality. So things like your cameras, your Corona lights, your Corona displacements, your Corona proxies, and your chaos scatters, they can all be accessed and tweaked from this one single tool. And so as you can probably already imagine, this can make working in your scenes a lot easier because say, for example, you want to select one single very specific Corona light. Uh, well, then uh, you don't have to with the lister, you don't have to go through all of those scene hierarchies and hunt for it there or hunt for it in the viewport. Uh, you can just bring up the lister and uh, select or tweak your Corona light from right there. Right then. So what we're going to be doing next here is we're going to be taking a look at how you can access the Corona lister. To access the Corona Lister, you just simply go under the Corona menu at the top here and you click on the Lister button. Now, if you want, you can dock the Lister anywhere inside Cinema 4D's UI. And so if you're into making your own custom layouts, well, then you can include the uh, Corona Lister in those layouts. Now, as far as the general functionality goes, you've got the different categories of things you can list and control. And generally, here is where your objects from these selected categories are going to be listed. You can tweak some of the most basic and often used parameters for the given type of objects. And you can also select any of the objects you'd like, just as you would in the object manager. It's just that you don't have to hunt for these objects inside all of your complex hierarchies. Okay, so now you know how you can access the Corona Lister. And what we're going to be taking a look at next here is how useful it can be for when it comes to accessing and controlling your cameras. First thing though, if you want to be working with cameras here is you'll want to make sure you're in this camera category. Obviously, if you want to control your lights or your proxies, uh, well, you'll want to be in these menus, but we're talking cameras here. So let's make sure we're in the camera category. In here, you'll have all your cameras that you have in your scene listed. Okay. And that includes your Corona cameras as well as the standard Cinema 4D cameras. So cameras without the Corona camera tag applied to them. Now, in this particular scene, uh, the object manager is not really cluttered. Everything is neatly organized, and so the cameras here are pretty easy to find. But imagine if this were a more complex scene, and your cameras would be nested inside complex hierarchies. Uh, well, then you can probably already guess how useful the lister would be then, right? Right. But now, even in such a simple scene, the lister is super handy because uh, let's say we like the current camera angle, but we'd like to adjust the focal length for it. Well, what we can do here now is we can just locate the active camera, as you can see, it's right here, and we can adjust its focal length, for example, right? So just like that. And there is no need, as you've probably seen, there's no need to go through all the menus inside your camera objects and such. Okay. Now, furthermore, you can also very easily switch between cameras just by hitting the active button right here. And that is going to switch you over to that particular camera. If you want, you can then, for example, right, very easily turn on the depth of field for this camera. And uh, you can also super easily tweak the f-stop value, uh, you know, just by inputting the value you'd like in here. And so now you can get that nice shallow depth of field going for your close-up angle. You can also uh, rename your cameras just by uh, double clicking on them and typing in the name. And now if your camera is buried inside a complex hierarchy and you just want quick access to all of your camera's properties, uh, you can just hit the uh, select button and that'll select that camera for you as if you selected it in the object manager by hand. And now that also means that you can now move the camera inside your viewport as you please as well, because well, it's now your selected object. So these are just some of the things you can do with the Corona Lister for when it comes to controlling your cameras. Uh, now it's quite useful in simple scenes, but it's almost indispensable in the more complex scenes where you have complex hierarchies. But now the Corona Lister doesn't just work with cameras, it also works with Corona lights. And so that's what we're going to be taking a look at next here. 
first thing, make sure you're in that lights category. And then as you can see, you've got all your Corona lights listed in here. Now, things are grouped a bit for easier readability. Uh, here we've got our Corona lights. Below them are all your Corona light materials. And below them are your Corona suns and Corona skies. So the idea is the same as with the cameras, easier accessibility and easier control. Right now, if you take a look at our object manager, you can see that we just have two light sources here that are easy to access. So the Corona sky and the Corona sun, whereas the rest of the lights are buried inside all our nulls here. And so finding them, as you can imagine, could take time. Instead, though, we can just control them through the lister right here. So what if we wanted to just for example, right? What if we wanted to change our sun's size? Well, it's easy. You just locate that parameter and you tune it to your liking. Then uh, we can also, for example, control the temperature of our light. So maybe if we just make this light here a little bit colder, well, as you can see, that's really easy and really quick to do, right? Now, obviously, we can also just select the lights by hitting the select button, and that way we get our lights properties going in our attribute manager. So the selection is made easy as well. And when you have your light selected, you can obviously also move this light around uh, because, you know, if you select it through the light lister, it's the same as selecting it through the object manager. So again, hopefully you can see just how useful the lister can be. Easy access and easy tweakability are the names of the game here. But cameras and Corona lights are not the only thing that there is to the lister because with it, you can also very easily control all the Corona proxies in your scenes. So here we've got a ton of them. And with the lister, we can save quite a bit of time when it comes to, uh, for example, selecting the individual proxies, right? Uh, we can adjust their visualization method if we so want to, and so on and so forth. Now, one thing that is rather odd in this specific scene is that we have this very sparsely populated island and we think it shouldn't be quite as sparsely populated. And so now with the Corona Lister, we can also have quick access to our chaos scatter objects. As you can imagine by now with the Lister, you can very easily tweak some of the basic settings you typically want to tweak with your chaos scatters as well. And so in our case here, we're just going to increase the amount of instances uh, for our island trees here uh, so that, you know, the island is a little bit more densely populated. And it's that easy. There's no mucking around in the hierarchy of the scene. We've got all the easy access we'd want to make basic changes to our scatters from right inside the lister itself. Now we can't forget about displacement here. Any Corona material that has displacement enabled is going to show up in the Corona light lister under that displacement category. And much the same applies here as it does to all the other things the lister can list. You can, for example, very easily select your materials from in here. Okay. And you can also tweak their settings if you so wish. One thing to note though, is that Corona displacement tags aren't going to show up in here. So any overrides you have set up with these tags, well, they're not going to show up in the lister. Now, one really cool thing that you can do for when it comes to controlling your uh, displacement with the Corona Lister is that you can very easily toggle the displacement to be on or off on a per material basis just by simply toggling a simple checkbox. And so if you're working in complex scenes where you sometimes want to turn certain displacement uh, effects off, uh, well, then this makes it a whole lot easier to do that because you can just toggle a checkbox and then that displacement on that material is either going to be on or off. Now, just as a bit of a quick tip when it comes to uh, displacement and the Chrome Lister, uh, if you want to disable all of the displacement effects in your scene with just one click, well, with the Lister, you can do that real easily. You just locate this toggle all toggle and you toggle it to off. And just like that, as you can see, you've disabled all of the displacement in this scene. Now, if you toggle it back to on, right, using the toggle all toggle here, that's saying toggle a lot, but as you can see now, all of the displacement effects in our scene are enabled again. And since we're talking about quick tips, well, here's another one. If you'd like to customize the Corona Lister by deciding which parameters you want it to display for you, well, you can very easily do that just by simply hitting this column visibility button here. And then you can decide which parameters you want the Lister to display. 
So for example, if you don't ever use the FOV parameter, the shutter speed parameter, or the projection selector mode thingy, uh, well then you can just hide these parameters from being displayed in the lister. And now the entire thing is, well, even neater looking and is conforming to your workflow all that more. Now, this does not only work with cameras. If you go, for example, under lights, right, you're going to be able to see that you have your calm visibility uh, buttons here as well. And so you can do the same thing here. Although do know that different subcategories will each have their own column visibility settings. So in our case here, Corona lights have their own button. And if we go ahead and we scroll down to our Corona suns, uh, you can see that they have their own settings because they have their own specific parameters. Now, one thing that we still haven't talked about is this actions button. So if you click on it, you're going to be able to see that you get access to a couple of additional commands for right now. It's mostly the delete command. Uh, but in the future, we might expand this menu with more commands that just don't fit anywhere else in the UI. All right, and so we're at the tail end of this tutorial. Um, we really hope that you are getting a sense of just how useful the Corona Lister can be. It can really make working in your scenes a lot easier, even if they're simpler scenes. And if they're complex scenes, well then, as we mentioned, the Corona Lister kind of becomes almost indispensable. All right, so thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.